Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers that are out there. And uh, it's nice to have a dry start to the day after all the rain that we had uh, from Friday into Saturday. So we're happy to be dry today. Uh, It has been a, a good Father's Day weekend for me so far, and I'm looking forward to some more time with our family afterwards. And hopefully you'll have a wonderful Father's Day as well. Uh, We welcome all of you, whether you are live stream or here in person, uh, to join us in the worshiping of the Great Father, our Lord uh, in heaven. Uh, So uh, Carla is going to come and give us some announcements and then lead us into our call to worship. Uh, The first two hymns of the day will not be in our traditional hymnal, but they will be on the screen as usual. So I'll turn it over to Carla. Good morning. morning. A few announcements before we get started. Uh, You can follow along in your bulletin or up on the screen. If you have joys or concerns, as always, please pass them on to Pastor Scott via text or email. uh, Or you can always call the prayer chain and so we can get those announcements, joys, concerns uh, out to the congregation. Also, Sunday School is still meeting at 9 a.m. in the parlor. they are still going over Revelation, and they will be for a while. So feel free to stop in because at some you, you can't not just join in. I mean, it's uh, I think it's an open discussion group, so <laughs> it's not like you missed anything from one uh, Sunday to the next. So at any time you can join in the discussion on Revelation. Uh, they the group will more than welcome uh, any new members. A new announcement. This is exciting. That youth group is picking up and meeting, uh, starting to meet again, and their next meeting is going to be Sunday, June 27th at 6 p.m. here at the church. And also, the next announcement is our today's altar flowers are given uh, from Martha Seymour in memory of her dad, Walter Meyer. I think that's all I have. Does anyone else have any um, announcements for the good of the church? Easy Sunday. All right, then. I will ask you then to stand and join me in the call to worship, and we'll get church underway. You come to the help of those who gladly do right. You come to the help of those who remember your ways. You, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. O oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, it is great that we can call you Father, for you are great and you are powerful and you are mighty. You are the creator of all things. But more importantly, you created us to be in your image. You created us to be your children, and you have done nothing but shower us with love. You've done nothing but give us grace and mercy and the promises of eternal life if we would simply turn to you and call out to you as our Father. Lord, as we come here to worship you, allow us to set aside all the things that distract us today. Let us truly focus on you. Let us truly worship you and honor you as our great and loving Father. All of this we ask and pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now sing our opening hymn, Love Lifted Me, verses 1, 2, and 3.
come together for our time of joys and concerns. I don't have a whole lot of uh, new stuff to add. Uh, I did get to see Howard and Dottie this week, and they uh, send along their love and uh, their joy uh, to you. They are um, adjusting well into uh, their new place. It uh, seems to be a very nice place. Um, Howard is, is struggling a bit because he's attached to oxygen, um, and, uh, but uh, he is improving, so it was good to get a visit with both of them. Uh, and Miss Sylvia sends her regards as well. I was able to speak with her uh, this week. Uh, Carly, you have an update on your dad for everybody? his rehab. Uh, really, the only thing that he has to still do before he can actually go home is do multiple stairs. He's done three uh, in their little rehab center. He has to go to the back of the building where they have a big set of sta 10 stairs in the stairwell, and if he can get up to six, then he's good to go. So there's a chance that he will actually go home this week. Um, I don't know. It kind of changes every day, but he is off oxygen, which is another good thing. Um, so he's weaned himself off the oxygen, so things are definitely improving, and all right now, good news. And I did have an update on Mike Flower. I was uh, texting with Kim this week. They did do some scans, and right now things are holding as good as can be. So she was really uh, pleased with uh, the results of the, the, his recent scans. Uh, so could just continue to pray for Kim and Mike Flower uh, on that. Uh, do we have any other prayer requests or updates or joys to share today? It is a quiet crowd today. <laughs> All right, with that, then let us be in prayer, and we will join together in our Lord's Prayer. Uh, grac uh, gracious Heavenly Father, uh, although we don't have anything new to add to our list, uh, Lord, you know our hearts, our minds, and our needs. Uh, Lord, sometimes there are things that are going on in our lives that uh, we don't always want to be made public. Uh, but Lord, uh, when we do not share with each other, we rob each other of the opportunity to pray. Uh, but Lord, we ask you to take these unspoken requests, uh, and uh, we ask you uh, to act, and we ask you to intercede wherever possible. Uh, Lord, uh, allow us to be your people, allow us to be your hands and feet in this world uh, so that people can experience your presence through us. Lord, allow our actions and our love for you and a love for other people lead them to a life in Christ as well. And Lord, as we come together and celebrate you as our great Father, we remember this prayer that your Son said to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now for the word of God. Not the offering. I can. I, you want me to talk over um, your plan? <laughs> it was just an. Ed, it was. It was small, a nice intro for Carla. That was my intro music. Car <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bonnie. Carla's segue music. <laughs> oh, sorry. Now for our scripture readings. I think so. This morning we'll start in Proverbs four verses one through nine. Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. For I, too, was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. Then he taught me, and he said to me, Take hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands, and you will live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. 
Cherish her and she will exalt you. Embrace her and she will honor you. She will give you a garland to grace your head and present you with a glorious crown. Now moving into the New Testament reading from Luke 15, verses 11 through 32. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was, everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Then he came to his senses. He said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death? I will sit out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put him in it. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. And when he came near the house, he heard, heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never, even, you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes come home, you kill the fatted calf for him? My, fa my son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would the ushers please come forward?
Heavenly Father, we come to you to present these gifts of tithes and offering. And Lord, what we give to you today is truly yours anyways, for you are the creator of all things. And we're just giving back to you a portion of the many blessings that you have given to us. You treat us like your children. You continue to strive to meet our needs. You continue to lead us and guide us and care for us. And out of our love for you, we return to you just a portion of the blessings that you have given to us. Lord, may your mighty hands work through these gifts. May they be used to further your kingdom. May they use to make your church flourish. This we ask and pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please remain standing for our next hymn. seated. You don't have to, but you can. Well, good morning again, and welcome to a wonderful Father's Day. And just as Mother's Day is a joyous occasion for many and yet a struggle for others, Father's Day can be both a good day for some and a hard day for others. You have our biological dads, we have our stepdads and foster dads, And we have people that every day step in to be a father figure for other people. We have dads that are still with us and dads that have passed away. But we also have dads who have turned to the dark side. We have dysfunctional dads, absentee dads, abusive dads, and even some who have unknown dads. I was very fortunate growing up. I had a pretty good dad. In fact, I grew up idolizing my dad, uh, thinking that he was literally the strongest and smartest man I'd ever known. Now, I remember him telling me one day, son, one of the hardest lessons every kid has to learn is the day they realize that their parents aren't perfect. I didn't understand at the moment what he meant. I mean, I didn't think my dad was perfect, perfect. I mean, he did get mad at us on occasion, but we usually deserved it. And as I grew up, my dad was still my pal. We still did lots of work together, 
and he always made work fun, and I had fun being with him. But as I grew older and older, I also began to learn that my dad wasn't so perfect. When I was 19, my mom left my dad. And as I got older, I started hearing stories from my much older half-brother about a mean and almost abusive father. These were things that I'd never seen before. These, these things shed a different light on my dad. How could the dad I revered and loved so much also be the man that my mom left or be the man that was abusive to my older brother? Fortunately, I can say I never had a great personal letdown by my father, but my mom did, and my brother did. But you see, earthly fathers are fallible, and some of them fail miserably. And sometimes we have to face certain truths about our fathers that are just not pleasant. But the good news is, is that we all have a father that is infallible, a father who is all-powerful, almighty, all-loving and all-merciful, a father that set the standard for the rest of us to follow. This week, we look at one of the most well-known parables by Jesus, the story of the prodigal son. And what's not to love about this story? We have a son who takes his inheritance, and he goes and lives it up, and then the son falls into despair. And realizing his mistake, he returns home hoping to just become a servant, only to discover a loving father waiting to welcome him home. It's a beautiful story. But we often overlook a detail. Starting off again with Luke 15, it says, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons, the younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all we had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. Let me point out two things. First, the story isn't just about one son. The story tells us that he had two sons. And second, I want to point out an important part of the story. It was the younger son who left. It wasn't the father. Ask yourself this. How many times have you felt abandoned by God? How many times have you felt distant from God? You see, in our story, we see that it wasn't the father that left, which tells us that God never leaves us. It is always us who walks away from God. We should never have to ask, where is God? God is always the same. It is us who moves away from God. I remember this commercial. I don't even remember what the commercial was about. But in the commercial, there's an, uh, a seasoned gentleman, we'll say, driving his truck, and over on the passenger side is his wife. And they see a newer pickup truck pass by, and in it is a young guy, and his girlfriend's all snuggled up next to him, and he's got his arm around her driving down the road. And the seasoned woman looks over to her husband, and she says, Remember when we used to be like that? And the husband said, I've never moved. <laughs> but you know, in that story, it's the same way with God. God is always present. God is always there. It is us who have moved. And as we look later in the story, we see that in verse 28, it says the older brother became angry and refused to go in. This is a story of two sons, both of whom were with the father and both of whom who separated themselves from their father. With the first son, it's easy to see because there's also a physical separation. I mean, he left town. 
And he went away and squandered his inheritance. And when he was at rock bottom, he decided to return to his father and beg to be a servant. Now, there have been times when I have been this person. Many of my college days were squandered in indulgence, where I had strayed far from my faith. Perhaps some of you have been this far away from God. Perhaps you've been lost, lonely, and empty. But more often than not, there are times when I have been the other son. There have been times when I was going to church, just going through the motions out of obligation. I was trying to be an obedient son when suddenly life throws me some curves and some things just don't go my way. And I get mad at God and I begin to feel distant. I'm sure many married couples have experienced a similar situation. Have you ever been in the same room with someone who is angry with you? I mean, you can physically be right next to each other, but still feel miles apart. You see, the older son was being obedient. He had been faithful to his father, but it was obvious he was distant in his relationship. And the older son allowed his emotions to cause him to sin and separate himself from God. And I think we do that often. We're here. We're going through the motions. We're doing all the right things. But we allow other things to be present with us that separate us from being with God and seeing God and experiencing with God the older son should have been close to his father. He should have known his father's heart, how his father yearned for the younger son to return. He should have known what a joy it would have been for his father to have the other child come back. He should have been celebrating with his father. But instead of knowing his father, instead of experiencing what his father was experiencing, and seeing how it weighed on him, he was just being routine and obedient and doing his thing because it was his to get. And even though both of them separated themselves from God, in both cases we see a father who eagerly seeks and desires to restore us to a right relationship. In Luke 15, the younger son decided to return. And then, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. See, this father had been waiting, watching, hoping, praying. And the father was not only willing to accept his son back home, he was willing to restore him to his rightful place at home. In verse 22, he said, But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. I think we should find it comforting to know that no matter how far we have gone from God, that when we come back to him, that he restores us and he rejoices to have us back. And no matter how big or little we think our sin is, God still seeks us. And in verse 28, the older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look at all these years I've been slaving for you, never disobeyed your orders. You never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes come home, you kill the fattened calf for him? You see, the older brother 
deliberately separated himself from God. His sin was still a sin. He was living for him, just as the younger son was living for himself. Right? The younger son went away and squandered everything. But the older son was living for him. Do you hear what he was saying? I did this, and I did this, and you never did this for me. He wasn't living for his father. He didn't have a relationship from his father. And then he put his foot down and he refused to go in. God, I'm mad at you. I've gone to church all my life. I've given my tithes. I've given my offerings. And then you let this good thing happen to this person. And yet you just stomp all over me, God. I'm mad at you. And despite his sin... The same father who had compassion and a desire for the son who was long gone still had the same passion and love for the obedient son. He sought him and pleaded with him to be restored to his rightful place. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours but we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again he was lost and he was found in other words he said son you know of the promises and the inheritance keep being faithful but be faithful with the right heart don't sin don't be angry. Come and be joyful. Celebrate because the Father has promised everything. The Father has promised us everything, including a home in heaven for eternity. This story is more than the story of the prodigal son. This is a story of two sons. Two sinful sons. But most importantly, this is a story about the perfect father. Our God who desires us to be his children. In Romans 14, it begins, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. And I've made this point before because it says it again and again in scriptures. Not everybody is a child of God. We make that mistake when we say that. Well, everybody's a child. No, everybody is God's creation. But not everybody is a child of God. And here Paul writes, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. To be a child of God, you must be uh, led by the Spirit of God. You must have faith in God. And in verse 15, he continues, The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. You're adopted into sonship. Being a Christian is not about being a slave to a whole bunch of rules. But it rather, it's about being adopted into sonship. It's a type of relation where God is our father and we now become part of a family where we are obedient, not out of obligation, but we are obedient out of love. And we have a family where our God lavishes us with love and rewards. And he continues to write, and by him we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Jesus, Jesus taught us that the laws of the Old Testament were designed to keep us in right relationship with God. But the law is not complete without Jesus Christ. He is our Messiah. Jesus taught us that we can cry out to God by calling him Daddy, Father. And Paul says, now if we are children, 
then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. You see, we must be children of God in order to go to heaven. And if we do not choose him, then our father is out seeking us. We have a father who is always seeking the lost. And God has charged us to help him find those lost and bring them back. And we have a great and forgiving father. From 1 John, we proclaim to you that we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. And on down to verse 8. If we, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That is a good and great and loving Father who welcomes us back. And later in 1 John 3, he writes these wonderful words. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. John says God lavishes his love on us. And isn't that the best we could hope for from our earthly fathers too? I hope that you have a great relationship with your earthly father. But if you don't, we need to remember that that love that our heavenly father has shown us. And it is after the example of the heavenly father that we should be living our lives. That we should be a people of grace and mercy. We should be a people seeking those who are astray. And I think all of us need to look at our lives and see where we are in relationship to our Father. And isn't it time that we all came home isn't it time that we gave our sins to God? For it doesn't matter how far away from God our sins have taken us. His love will always restore us. Just as it says in the hymn, Ye who are weary, come home. Whoever has ears, let us join together in hymn number 348 softly and tenderly, verses 1, 2, and 4.
Our scripture said that if we were without sin, we are deceiving ourselves. And so our last hymn is talking to all of us to come and dwell with God. And it doesn't matter whether you've gone as far away from God as you think you could go, or if you're here with God but not really here with God, if you're just going through the motions, if you're showing up out of obligation, if you're showing up because somebody will say, oh, we know whose empty pew that one was. It's time to come home. It's time to reconnect with God. It's time to experience His love, His forgiveness, and His mercy, and it's time to celebrate with Him the joy of being with God and knowing the great inheritance we have, the joy of eternal life with God in heaven. Let us this day and every day recognize our great Father who lavishes his love on us and in our hearts let us always be home with him. Go now in his love, go in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.